Joining us on the program, kicking things off with his usual Thursday appearance. It's uh, Jim Garrity from the Campaign Spot at National Review Online. How you doing? Cam, militant. That's how I'm doing. <laughs> it's been a very it's been a very interesting week uh, for for me and in the world of news. We can pick up with either one of the big topics you want to talk about. I, I imagine that segue kind of naturally leads to Altarier Square in Madison, Wisconsin. That's where, right. Uh, where uh, Governor Mubarak, according to uh, some of the protesters there, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what did I say, Governor Mubarak? Except, I meant uh, Governor Hitler. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's how. Never Love mind the that, new civility, by the way. The new tone. It's oh, it's refreshing. Tucson changed everything, didn't it, Cam? Wow, you know, it, it completely brought out this whole new side of people. Uglier. Um, I I'm pretty struck by this because I, I you know I, I don't follow state politics quite as well. Uh, as I'm keeping an eye on national politics. But I knew there was a big budget fight, and what you're seeing in Wisconsin isn't terribly different from what you're seeing in a whole bunch of state capitals, which is basically heck of a lot more money going out than there is coming in. And it's been that way for a few years, and the situation is only getting worse, a circumstance not terribly uh, alien to us in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the governor, Scott Walker, has put forth a proposal that would require unions to pay, by my standards, not a heck of a lot more, uh, for their health insurance and for their pensions. Right now, I believe they pay nothing for the health insurance. I believe that's right. Uh, and they pay you know, a small amount, effectively doubling what they contribute to their pensions. Union members don't like it. I get that. I understand that. That's, you know, nobody likes doing all these things. But it's worth noting, it's not like they're having the money taken away from them. Um, it's not you know, coming out of their take-home pay, but it's still going to two things that they use, health insurance and pensions. To a lot of private sector workers, a pension is an alien concept of this ancient relic from the past that nobody really uh, knows too much about. That you know, most people have 401ks and they go up in some months, they go down some months, and you know, there's an element of risk to them. So um, it's not too dissimilar from a fight with unions we saw with Chris Christie up in New Jersey, and basically almost every every major state in the union, with a few exceptions like Indiana. Uh, have bought more government than they can afford, and they have given too generous contracts to state workers than they can afford, including state teachers. And this is the reckoning. And you're seeing uh, Scott Walker, you know, basically bearing the brunt of it. This is only the first of many fights. And uh, right now you're seeing effect two, 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 two outrageous deaths. One is obviously a whole bunch of teachers going down to Madison and making a big old protest and mm -hmm. apparently trying to get into the state capitol and, and you know, raise as much heck as possible. But the other one <laughs> is to see the Democrats in the state Senate uh, basically evoke Richard Kimball in The Fugitive <laughs> and just go on the run, because if they're not there, the, the, vote can't be held. the existing Senate Republicans don't have a qu enough votes to hold a quorum. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, frankly... First of all, I'd like to see this get resolved so we can start working on uh, right to carry in Wisconsin. I mean, you know, <laughs> come on. We, we've been told it's not going to happen until after the budget is cleared up. So, <laughs> well, how long could that take? On that. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think we've got actually a little video clip hmm? uh, of some of the uh, protesters. This, this is uh, uh, from uh, Ann Althaus's blog, uh, law professor at uh, University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, it, it take a listen just to a. a, a brief portion of uh, two individuals who are out there in Madison today. Yeah, right. Let's go. Let's cut through the Capitol. Well, last night they were on the fourth floor. They couldn't All right, so there's the separated at birth picture of What's your, Scott what, Walker. What is this like sign supposed to mean? Pardon me? Are you, are you oh, saying here. that he's uh, Hitler's? Hitler's? One of Hitler's first acts was to take over labor unions okay, are you? so that people could not organize. So you're saying Scott Walker, Governor That's Walker, what he's is, doing, uh, is taking over is labor Hitler? unions? Okay, but I mean the, the little mustache, the Hitler mustache like on Hitler. him. Yeah. The revolution so. is being televised. Okay. Goodbye. Gotcha. This is no longer a one-sided class war. We need to tax the rich. They hoard all of our money. We give all our money, all our paychecks to the rich, to the corporations who exploit us in our work anyway. They don't even want to pay their fair share of taxes. That's why we can't afford anything. Our budget deficit is because we don't tax the rich. Meanwhile, productivity is up. Wages are down. You, all of you, are working harder for less money. Who gets that extra surplus? It's the rich corporations who keep it. Apparently the guy doesn't realize they're talking about Public sector <laughs> unions. Uh, I was going to say, first of all, 
uh, the rich are uh, the, the rich take all of our paychecks. Now, Cam, I, I, on the way here, <laughs> Bill Gates jumped out of an alley, shook me down, and took my money. So sometimes it happens. But so I so how do the rich take our paychecks? Uh, you're asking the wrong guy, Jim. Honestly, get, uh, yeah, he didn't even get into the. They're not paying their. Fr- he got a little bit into the. But you know, they're taking our paychecks. I don't get that. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, generally you're basically, but I love, like, the, first of all, I love the look in the eyes of that woman where, like, the idea that there's any dispute that Scott Walker is not the second, you know, reincarnation of Hitler. Um, it, like, she, she could not, gra- you know, she, she, was, she was a little indignant that anyone was questioning that, too. Yeah. You, you know, like, Hitler was also vegetarian. Does that mean every vegetarian is like, you know, like, like we, we, our, first of all, there, there is, of course, Godwin's Law, this, which originally is interpreted as the longer an online debate goes, the more certain it is that someone will invoke Nazis or Hitler. It then kind of got morphed into an interpretation that the first person to invoke Nazi and Hitler in a modern political debate modern political debate is deemed to have lost the debate. I did come up with Cam's corollary, uh, mm-hmm. which is, in a pinch, any authoritarian dictator that has recently been in the news can also be substituted for Hitler. Since we have seen uh, Hosni Mubarak become such nope, a popular no, no. new uh, it, it comparison, is true, I would note in our fr- in the eyes of our friends on the left, the only people like Saddam, you know, who who do not get properly compared to Saddam Hussein, to to Hitler, are people like Saddam Hussein, brutal dictators with funny mustaches. They're the only people you can't compare to Hitler, even if they actually are gassing people and and doing stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so you know, obviously Hitler gets invoked in all this, but I'm more struck by the state lawmakers. Like, you know, as, as observed on hot air, literally running away from their budget problems. And, and, you know, the question was, all right, so first of all, there was this sense of where are they? They started calling into local media from an undisclosed location. <laughs> now, I'm hoping it was the same undisclosed location as Dick Cheney because he would just kick their butts. <laughs> That's but, where he was. He was at the Best Western Resort in Rockford, Illinois the entire you time. The, <laughs> you fellows sure picked the wrong place to undisclosed location to hide. <laughs> Um, so, so there's that, and then it turns out that they're at this resort in Rock. Like, like I hope the opt- the optics of this are playing as badly in Wisconsin as I think they are, because we are not. We're going to leave our job. <laughs> we're not going to deal with this issue. Never mind that we had our butts handed to us in the last election four months ago. Yeah, yeah. We are now going to go to a resort across the state line. I'm dying to know who's paying for this. Who paid for the bus to get them there? Who's paying for their rooms at this swank resort? Paying? The state line? What do you mean paying for stuff? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Well, you know, <laughs> the hotel Just wants on the something. Card. Yeah, the car, you know. <laughs> my, my suspicion is that if they have some sort of per diem or something, like they're charging the taxpayers. To, they are charging the taxpayers to avoid doing their jobs. Uh, I like the, uh, the the phrase I saw on uh, Twitter earlier tonight, flea baggers. Flea baggers. Uh, I good. liked that. I thought that was good. Now, uh, Jim, before we run out of time here, because we were just jam-packed tonight, we've got to get to the other mm. Story of the week, uh, and that is that you are, according to uh, Nia Rosen, a uh, full-fledged member of the uh, right-wing attack squad. So congratulations on making varsity. That's been long established, actually, for quite some time. I think what's now is that uh, I'm managing to destroy people's careers uh, just to promote my own career. Uh, by the way, I haven't gotten a raise. I have not gotten my own TV. All the stuff that you're supposed to get when yeah, you... Yeah, you know what? It was near Rosen. Yeah. It was on uh, Anderson Cooper 360, That's not you. That's a very good point. I, you know, <laughs> wait a minute. So, um, for, so for, for yeah, let's, let's take this back from the... Yeah, yeah. Two. this was two nights ago. Yeah, near um, Rosen. Okay, so the utterly, utterly awful news about Lara Logan, the correspondent for CBS News, uh, breaks. It comes out that she was assaulted sexually in Egypt while covering the protests, uh, separated from her crew and the, the guys who were there to protect her. Uh, and it sounds like just the most horrible thing you could possibly imagine. People are responding to this. People are saying the general comments of, oh my God, this is so awful. Prayers are with her. And I see Andy Levy of uh, Fox News's Red Eye say in response to Neil Rosen, well, you're just a, ter- boy, you know, you're just a terrible human being. So I click over to Neil Rosen. I have only the vaguest familiar. I, the, I vaguely recognize the name. He is a fellow at the New York University Center for Law and Security. He is a journalist. He has covered all over the Middle East and Afghanistan. Now, Cam, when I say that, you're probably saying, oh, he embedded with the U.S. military. No. No, he embedded with the Taliban. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that they had an embedding program. Mm-hmm. But uh, so apparently he's done a lot of reporting from the region, talking to the other side and seeing what they think. Now. There are times, you know, if, if somebody said to me... Fair and balanced, Jim. Yeah. It's just fair and balanced. Peter Bergen interviewed Osama bin Laden. I understand there's a certain news value if you get a chance to speak to folks like that. 
I myself am always kind of want to carry a GPS and let the U.S. military know where they were. You know, but I, I, I'm one of those crazy guys who's rooting for us to win the war on terror. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so Neil Rosen is this guy, and he's just making comment after comment on his twi- on his Twitter feed. Each one worse than the last. Basically, kind of dismissing this. Letting he, he thinks yeah. that Lara Logan's a terrible correspondent, and she wrote nice he, she wrote nice things about General Stanley McChrystal. So why did why wasn't he there to say? I mean, just just one snide thing after another. And even even if you didn't like the reporting of Lara Logan. I, guess I, I have no particular strong opinion about her one way or the other before the news of this incident. But even if you thought she was the worst reporter in the world, this is not the time to come out and see, to, to air all your grievances with her. Um, Cam, I hope you don't mind me citing the example. If you had heard about something terrible happening to Paul Helmke or Rosie O'Donnell or, or any one of these folks on the other side of this issue who, uh, who you disagree with strongly, mm-hmm. you know, your first reaction would be, oh, my God, that's terrible. Yeah. I, I mean, you know— and. and it doesn't mean you agree with them. It doesn't look, mean look, you. Here, here's the thing: the internet is a very big place. Mm-hmm. Uh, when something bad happens to somebody, you're always going to find anonymous trolls who will be saying the most wretched and despicable things that they would never say with with their name attached to it. This time around, Neil Rosen actually, yeah, you, you always let like loose the... with what we, you know, what you find in the anonymous comments on you know various blogs and whatnot. But it was on his Twitter feed, his name, and he still, I don't think, understands. That what he did was a a, a gross violation of, uh, you know, Laura yeah. Logan's dignity and and you know just God the 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 common humanity that we share with one My, another. Yeah. You're the, right. The, the word that I that kind of kept coming back to was monstrous. That if you can look at Lara Logan, you know, enduring something like that and not feel some sympathy, not feel some empathy, not say, oh my God, that's terrible. And your first reaction is to talk about how you think she's a terrible reporter. You have no sympathy for her. Uh, and it probably wasn't that bad, and all these other things that he said. Um, there's something seriously wrong with you. I mean, yeah. psychologically, psychopathy and narcissism are defined by the inability to feel empathy for the suffering of others. And I think that's kind of a textbook example of what we're seeing here. So I see this going on, and I know we've seen these sorts of controversies you know, bubble up before. And my instinct is the first thing they do is they try to destroy the evidence. So I just start hitting print screen every time, every couple of posts he says so i have a I preserve a record of what he said because yes he did go back and delete them because you know because uh-huh. one because he recognized they were terrible but two <clears throat> i think it's probably a nice way to try to avoid the consequences of saying terrible things if you can eliminate the record i tend to like to like that the world know everything that was said not a expert uh, cleaned up version so i put that up on the site and i said well <clears throat> he's a fellow at the law center for law and security at new york university your move nyu uh, and I kind of had this cynical prediction that we would see the usual tut tutting about yeah, sensitivity. I did and, too. You know, we'd sweep it under the rug. Um, the next morning, I called them. <laughs> they knew who I was. They knew what I was calling about. Apparently, this had gotten on their radar screen fairly quickly, and uh, I was told that a statement would be coming shortly. The statement that came roughly an hour later was that uh, Neil Rosen had offered his resignation and it had been accepted. And that the head of the center had said that while they knew he had always been provocative and controversial, these were despicable things and had no no place in this setting, yada, yada, yada. And so um, I don't know if I could say I was necessarily rooting for the guy to get fired. I, to me, it was almost beside the point. It's the guy thinks this way. And that's that's deeply, deeply troubling. Um, yes. And, and he, you know, later... But, but he, he later uh, uh, you know, look... There, there, there are people who will think this way. What I actually find more troubling is that, again, he's now proclaiming himself to be a victim of evil conservatives like yourself, and he's getting airtime. He It was him on Anderson Cooper 360. Yeah. Well, one of the things he had said is that, well, it would have been funny if it happened to Anderson Cooper, i.e. a sexual assault in Tahrir Square. And as we know, Anderson Cooper did get physically assaulted, not mm-hmm. too bad, kind of roughed up a little bit in there. Uh, so I can imagine Anderson Cooper wanting to ask a question or two of this fellow who seemed to think it'd be so funny if he were sexually molested in, uh, in, in you know, while covering Egypt. Um, but having said that, I mean, you know, you said he they gave him a, you know, he had this forum to offer this, I feel bad, but, and then offered 800 words of why it's not his fault. Yeah. It, but it was only at Salon. I mean, it wasn't a real publication. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I actually, it, it did have a whole bunch of comments and about half of them were, well, we forgive you. You really are a victim of terrible right wingers like Jim Garrity. Oh. And about half of them were USOB. You know, don't you dare think that you're forgiven for this. You know, I, I, it's interesting when issues like this come along because there's some folks who will always believe that well, true evil lies in conservatives. So if Neil Rosen says he's being attacked by conservatives, people like me must be the bad guy. 
Uh, and then there were a couple of people who I think are, are on, probably on the other side of the aisle of me, probably on the left side of, of things, but who are feminists and who actually believe that, hey, rape isn't funny, and I nearly used another F word there, Cam, mm. uh, that you just, that there's just no way to, to you know, to say that, well, let's let bygones be bygones, no big deal near. I, I mean, this is a, a serious, I, I, I just, the, the word just keeps coming back to me, it's disturbing. And it, it's, to me, it gets to the, the, the notion that near Rosen needs to see that people are people. They are not abstract concepts of people you like and people you don't like. And so what you think of Laura Logan's uh, uh, reporting beforehand is, is immaterial when she's just gone through this terrible ordeal and, and is, is suffering. You know, I, I, look, these are these are very basic things that most of us understand. But then again, Nir Rosen is now proclaiming <laughs> himself to be. Let me look. You, Nir Rosen, are proclaiming yourself to be a bigger victim than the reporter who was sexually assaulted. That. All kinds of words that I don't want to use on uh, a family-friendly radio going through my mind right now. You know, there, there's a it's cognitive. Call it what you want. Call it cognitive dissonance. Call it uh, extreme narcissism. Uh, the, you know, and again, the other troubling thing is here's a guy who thinks this way, who still turns it back on him, uh, and, and oh, look at how I'm being victimized here. Who is? You know, again, somebody that we are told by the uh, the, the uh, media uh, elite in this country that you know he's the type of person that we should be paying more attention to. Well, I wonder if if the, you know I won't you know we, we saw how NYU dealt with it. I, I kind of wonder if they they looked afterwards and said, how did he end up here? You know, were there any warning signs that this guy was this kind of a person? Oh, or? I, I I highly doubt that. I you think, think they're he, giving NYU way too much credit I, on that I, one. I don't know. I, I have a tough time. You know, he would have us believe this is a momentary lapse uh, of an otherwise sterling career. And I have a I, I have a tough time believing that. But I'll let others look at his career and, and come to those conclusions. Um, I, 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 you know, because it's, it's one of the things I've been thinking about is, you know, look, I'm, I'm a reporter. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in, you know, and it, there's going to be a day when I'm going to say something stupid. And I don't believe anybody should be too harshly judged for one stupid comment. The problem is, is that Rosen kept digging himself in deeper and deeper, <laughs> and you know, one stupid rape comment is, rape, is one pal. stupid yeah, comment. Yeah. Nine straight tweets, each yeah. one of them a little bit worse than the last. Each time somebody says, "Oh my God, that's horrible," and you don't res- you don't recognize, "Oh, I've just written something horrible." Um, again, it, it points to that lack of empathy and that lack of ability to see things from the view of somebody else. That's just because you are a mean, evil right winger, Jim Garrity, and uh, you need to watch your mouth. There you go. It's the new civility. Uh, 18 after the hour. Mr. Garrity, thank you again for coming on the program. Cheery topics as always, Cam. <laughs> Look forward we couldn't to- talk about the RoboCop statue? <laughs> Maybe next week. All right.